I'm Bridget Bardot, for all you know, your girl behind the counter, and uh, I'm wearing sunglasses. Um, and hopefully I will get myself a shark hat soon because we're gonna cover something different. Uh, we're done with Resident Evil, obviously. Uh, I ran out of movies. And I decided I gotta do something classier. I, I gotta regale the counter crew with some like, some true class in this channel. I'm like, I have covered Pal and Press Burger. I have covered a movie where women eat poop. And now I'm covering the entirety of the Jaws series. You yell shark. We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. We gotta do it quick. Gotta bring back the tourists to put all your businesses on a fan basis. by watching uh, Jaws the Revenge, AKA Jaws, How Ellen Got a Roof Back. And I'm like, what What does this franchise have to offer? Like, I, I gotta cover all of these. So I'm gonna be covering all the Jaws movies. Um, we've moved from Robocop to Resident Evil to Jaws. So at least we've moved out of something with an R title. Really, I was struck with the idea of like, how do you cover a masterpiece? Like. What does one do to cover a masterpiece like the shark movie um, that you're watching the trailer for? And the answer is, you do five reasons why you love it. Um, while being terrified that you're doing such a mid-job with all of this, but also realizing that's okay if you do a mid-job. Another thing that I was really struck with while I was going and creating this list was really the fact that Jaws helped created not only the tone, but also the visual and the writing style of the modern blockbuster. So, a little bit about why I like Jaws, but also about how it really helped create a modern blockbuster formula. Without further ado, let's explain what this is about. Although you probably already know, because it's Jaws. Come on! What's wrong with this right. It's man versus nature, sheriff versus shark, Public decency and safety versus capitalism. So a woman has just been eaten off the coast of Amity Island, and instead of going and closing down the beaches like Sheriff Brody wants, Mayor Vaughn, the mayor of Amity Island, has decided he likes money more. I don't think you appreciate the gut reaction people have to these things. So, he's keeping those beaches open for the summer. Now it's up to a shark scientist, a guy with a major grudge against sharks, and some guy who has really not had anything to do with sharks up until about five minutes ago, AKA Sheriff Brody, to take down the shark who really is determined to ruin everyone's summer. This is Jaws, the first movie, the best movie. Anyways, what do I like about this? So I know this is incredibly obvious and like, I shouldn't even have to say this, but Jaws is an impeccably written script. Like, nothing feels wasted, nothing feels supercilious, and I'm never wondering, why am I watching this? And I bring this up because movies these days are getting longer, like, your typical, like, MCU or, like, DCU movie is about close to, like, two, two and a half hours now. So, a lot of the time I wonder, at least at some point in some of these movies, why am I watching this scene? Is this simply to go either set up a sequel or like pad something out? Like, what's happening here? But I never wondered that with Jaws. And that's mostly because there are clear, layered in multiple conflicts that are layered issues that are not only between a man and a shark, but the mayor versus the town folks, the town folks versus the sheriffs, and also an overarching conflict of the people of Amity Island versus capitalism. We're really a little anxious that you're, uh, you're rushing into something serious here. It's your first summer, you know. What does that mean? I'm only trying to say that Amity is a summer town. We need summer dollars. You watch it as an adult, and you kind of realize, like, oh yeah, it's kind of reasonable. 
reasonable that those people on Amity Island would be like, what do you mean you want to shut down the town? Because this is the only time of year that they get any money. They're a tourist trap. So, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Those interesting and layered issues help this movie, which runs at about two hours, seem interesting. But it also helped shape this three-act structure with your inciting incident in the first part, followed by your conflict at about 20 minutes into the movie. And they're constantly playing with the conflict and its expectations. You're constantly getting red herrings on whether or not this shark is going to arrive, so when it does, it is palpable and powerful and you've been waiting for it and it keeps everything just consistently interesting in a movie that could very well have dragged a long time. I know this is super obvious, but like also fantastic camera work and yes it is Spielberg, but like I'm gonna break it down to, to more than just Spielberg. Um, it's simple, it's clean, but it's also brutally effective cinematography. Like, there are lots of shots of just scenery with very little action. And it feels like a lot of modern blockbusters are, like, very busy in their action shots, so I really want to highlight how Jaws does theirs. It's very clean tracking. Like, it's clean, it's clear. My favorite one is about 12 minutes in, where, like, you're watching this tracking shot that is literally taking place on the boat. You can see the action very well, but you can also... It gives you time to feel the tension. It's not just constantly bombarding you with, like, stuff, as a lot of modern blockbusters seem to bog you down with stuff, mostly because they have CGI budgets and they're using them, so I can't fault them on that. Um, but also... CGI was not available, so there was more specialty shots back then. Like, one of the greatest ones is, like, some of these water shots, and, like, these shots where Spielberg's putting the camera in the water. And they're used sparingly. They're not, like, a constant thing. It's not constantly trying to impress you. Which is really actually kind of refreshing because it feels like a lot of movies are just trying to impress nowadays. And there's something to be said about the simplicity because there are three very disparate locations in this. There is uh, the beach, there's interior shots, but there's also a lot of shots on the boat. And I bring up its simplicity and I praise it because this could literally look like three different movies, but because everything is so simple and well organized, it feels cohesive in a way that a modern blockbuster wouldn't feel cohesive. So I gotta give it credit where credit is due. Let's see. Let's drop another chum mark. Jaws is a shockingly brutal film. I think, in fact, more brutal than people kind of remember. Like, there's a fair amount of blood in this film. It's obviously not a splatter film, nor would I advocate it to be. Although I'm a gore whore when it comes to other films, so uh, check out my other stuff if you want more of that perspective. And while it is not exactly gory, the amount of blood they use is effective and creates a sense of visual danger that you don't see in modern blockbusters, which lack, of course, blood and also sex, which is a different conversation. <laughs> um, and it creates a sense of visual danger when you see that blood in the water. There are bites, there are kills, this isn't a paper cut, and at some point you even see a body part. Although you don't exactly see limbs flying around. And not only that, you also have the kills consistently referenced throughout the entire movie so that it doesn't have to go and rely on constant shots of just violence. And the danger is not only from the shark. It's very realistic. I do love the scenes where people almost get crushed because everyone's panicking because it's a shark on the way. In addition to the scenes where people almost drown, it keeps stuff grounded, it keeps stuff realistic, and it keeps stuff feeling intense, which certainly helps with that pacing. It's clear and obvious the gravitas of what we're getting into, and it's made known visually without gratuity. 
which is something I can't say for subsequent movies dealing with shark attacks. Despite there being a ton of characters, those characters are really memorable. Like, this is a fairly large cast, actually. Um, you got, uh, Sheriff Brody, Ellen, Michael, uh, Prince Cooper, Mayor Larry, and of course, the incomparable Bruce the Shark. And aside from the incredible, me incredibly memorable shark, the rest of the cast is just a bunch of middle-aged white people, which means that they're not terribly visually distinctive, but we all know who they are, especially Quint, Cooper, and uh, Sheriff Brody, who are, like, kind of, except for Quint, around the same age as well. Um, mostly because they have entrances that are incredibly indicative of their characters. My favorite is Quint, um, who actually enters the scene by literally scratching a chalkboard in the middle of a meeting, which so says everything about who he is, what he wants, and how he messes with other people to get what he wants. Quint clearly doesn't care about social conventions. He's very okay with interrupting this meeting, but he knows enough about them and is observant enough to literally go and disrupt something for the sake of it. And the reason why he's okay just going and disrupting it is because he does have the confidence and the good point of, I'm the only person who knows how to catch a shark over here, so you're about to listen to me and pay what I want. It is brutally effective and says everything about who Quint is without giving a giant monologue where he says, my name is Quint and I do blah, 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 blah. Um, Every single character has motivations and flaws, and I'm never wondering, why is this person here? And also, they have a bearing on the plot. Now, that is not always something I could have said in my Resident Evil reviews, where a lot of time I was wondering, why is that character there? I'm not too sure why the hell they're there, but I'm just going to accept that they are, and just think to myself, maybe they're here so that Alice is sad when they die. Um, they just kind of felt like cannon fodder a lot of the time, and that's not a good way to think about your characters. And it also doesn't lead to great actor chemistry. A lot of the time it kind of felt like every single Resident Evil person was kind of acting separately from each other, but there's fantastic actor chemistry in there. Let's get to the final point. My final point is a weird one. I really appreciate the fact that this is shot on location in the ocean, creating one of the most troubled shoots you have ever fucking seen. Yeah, we're getting into the weird, like, I looked on Wikipedia film history part of this, because there's quite a few informations and documentaries on Jaws. So this was most notably a pretty challenging shoot because uh, Steven Spielberg decided he was gonna be method and shoot in the water. Now, was that a smart idea? Probably not. Was that a very effective idea? And did it have a lot of chutzpah? It certainly did. And we certainly appreciate it in retrospect. Um, so why is this a challenging shoot? Not only are we shooting in the water, which can go up your camera equipment and ruin an entire camera very easily, um, but also, most notably, um, light exposure is very different on the water because you have different things refracting off of it. Most notably, light refracts off of water. And also, light in nature is very unpredictable because time exists. And also, the wind exists as well, which makes everything infinitely less stable. But I will say, this location shooting and this obsession with being on location creates a tactileness which helps increase the longevity of this film. Um, and also actor chemistry. It manages to bring an ambiance simply because you are literally there experiencing what your characters are experiencing and literally being there helps. And they were really going to need that help as, uh, funny enough, the animatronic shark broke partway through the shoot. Um, and you gotta act as though that shark is there. So as a result, your location is doing the heavy lifting. Yeah, you don't necessarily have a giant animatronic shark to run away from anymore, but you still have the ocean and the ocean is pretty damn scary. 
And also, I bring this up because as we're getting into an increasing reliance on CGI locations, mostly because we're able to do a lot more, and like you're able to go to places like, uh, I, I don't know, like Avengers headquarters and like Middle Earth, simply because CGI exists and you couldn't find a location like that. But as you get more of this CGI acting, you get what I like to call Phantom Menace acting. which I lovingly call Phantom Menace acting because it's all over the place in especially Star Wars prequels. I'm like, everyone's made the fucking joke about it. And I'm gonna make a joke about it too because I have no creativity. It creates an airy performance because you know that they are acting in the middle of a green studio to a tennis ball. So as a result, the acting quality feels very airy and the line delivery is off and they're like looking at like, let's just say the characters here, they're looking here. Um, that, it, it's not given that person is really there. It, it's giving you are talking to a tennis ball or like a foam stick or maybe just a guy in a morph suit, if you're lucky. And as a result, this sort of obsession with location and ability to ground your actors and your camera work and your logistics and everyone else in that location creates again not only that tactile quality but a kind of permanence it is literally cinema verite you are literally looking at that location despite the fact that everything you're doing in that location is fake and that matters in keeping a film relevant decades later. You captured a time and a place, and that's pretty fucking cool. Anyways, those are five reasons why you should watch Jaws. I'm sure my next reviews are gonna be more interesting for the Jaws franchise as we're gonna get into way more crazy territory. Anyways, I'm Bridget Bardot for all you know, your girl behind the counter, and I talk about movies you don't give a shit about, and some that you do, like this one. Uh, so like, comment, and subscribe for even more movies you don't give a shit about, and find me at Instagram, where I'm at official girl behind the counter, and Letterboxd, where I am Bardo for all you know. And when I don't forget my lines, I will see you in the next one, counter crew.